Hey guys, welcome to Mr. Smith's Kitchen. Brian, Mr. Smith, Kitchen. Take these glasses off so you're not looking at the light behind my phone. Um, it's Thursday, thought we'd bake a pie. And we're gonna do a uh, butterscotch pie. Never made one before, sounds delicious. I like butterscotch, I like pie. Uh, this pie is like a butterscotch custard with a meringue top to it, uh, much like a lemon meringue pie, only in butterscotch form. And uh, it seems pretty straightforward, fairly easy, not real complicated. Um, <clears throat> so I think we can do this, um, hands down. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Uh, if this is your first video, I hope you get something out of this. Check out some of my other videos. Um, I don't think they're too bad. You know, that's, of course, I'm a little biased. Uh, if you're returning to my channel, thank you. It means you're getting something out of this. You enjoy the neighborhood and the content. And uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, if you are new, I, my channel is food. Uh, just all kinds of food. Canning, baking, cooking, uh, growing in the garden, things of that uh, nature. It, it just, if it has to do with food and kitchens, we're on it. So um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, notification bell is right next to that if you're so inclined on both. Uh, that'll let you know when my videos come out. I try to put videos out every Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Wednesdays we do dinner, Thursdays we bake. Um, I do occasionally get to throw in some extra videos. Like I think it's either already came out or it'll be coming out um, in the next couple of days. Uh, I, I processed uh, 72 pounds of tomatoes. Um, and while well, the video is on about 40 pounds of that, uh, the other 30 went to uh, Salsa and Rotel, the first rounds of those, which uh, I will have videos out processing those also to show you how I make my uh, Salsa and my Rotel. Um, but, yeah, we just do all kinds of food stuff, but at least uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, awesome. Uh, I, I encourage those. Um, I didn't used to, but they help get us in the algorithm um, for YouTube, which puts us out on more feeds, which helps grow our neighborhood, grow our neighborhood. And, you know, we can provide a good neighborhood, uh, a nice atmosphere, someplace to hang and talk. Um, and no matter what your background or belief is, or your age, or your race, or, you know, what you do. So, um, that's always important, you know, subscribe, notifications, thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, we do have a bunch of new subscribers. Welcome. I'm so happy to meet you um, or that you subscribed and found something that interesting in my channel and or me. Um, so that being said, let's get down here to the countertop where we can start making a butterscotch pie. What do you say? All right. I'll be back in just one millisecond. All right, down here at the countertop. So uh, some things you'll need minimum. Uh, medium saucepan, preferably a heavy bottom, that way you don't burn things, um, but use what you got, hands down, just be careful. You'll need a bowl, um, and then when we get to the meringue, you'll either need a hand mixer, I suppose you could use a whisk, but man, that'd be a lot of work on your arm and wrist. Uh, in this case, I'm using a stand mixer, which is right over here that you can't see it. So, uh, you'll also need a recipe, and then, uh, which I'm providing for you, and a scale. Scales are always necessary. I will give you all the measurements in cups, tablespoons, teaspoons, but I'll also give them to you in grams or milliliters um, if it's a liquid. That way, anybody can make this no matter where you're at. So the first thing we're gonna do is, in our medium saucepan, we're gonna kick that bad boy on a medium high, and we're gonna take a quarter cup or 57 grams of butter, and we're gonna throw that in there. Um, if you're gonna use salted butter, you don't want to put any butter or any salt in this recipe. I, I, I'm using unsalted butter, and so I'm gonna put a quarter teaspoon of salt in this uh, when we get to it, but I wanted to let you know I, I'm using unsalted butter. Any salt we add to this down the road, if you're using a salted butter, um, don't you don't have to put any extra salt into it. So we're gonna get this butter melted once we get it melted, uh, we'll move on to the uh, next ingredient. Butter is melted, so now we're going to add, <clears throat> let me move some things around here, three quarters of a cup or 165 grams of dark brown sugar. Now, three quarters of a cup, if you're not using a scale, um, it's packed. You want it densely packed in there in your measuring cup. 
So we're gonna put that in, and we're gonna follow that up with uh, two and a half uh, two and a half cups of milk. I'm using whole milk, which is 560 milliliters. And we're gonna put that in there, give it a good stir, and we're going to cook this until until the uh, sugar is dissolved and which will take a minute or two and then we're going to let it go until we start to see some bubbling around the edges uh milk when it when it begins to boil it always starts to bubble around the edges why i don't know i just know that to be true so and, and you want to keep an eye on this you don't want to go too far away because if you do and this milk does start to bubble on the edges it will quickly start bubbling everywhere and and pour out of your pan. Uh, milk is not like water. It does not just sit there and bubble. It, it expands. The air gets in it and it expands out of your pot. So, got that stirred up. While we're waiting on that, we can go ahead and get some of our dry stuff together. Or get our, our other half together that we're going to mix. We're going to mix the two things together at any rate. Um, so while that's going in, in this bowl here that we got, we're going to put four egg yolks. All right. And it's just uh, egg yolks, large egg yolks. Uh, offhand, I don't know what the gram weight for yolks would be, but if you buy large eggs or 50 grams, you want the each, um, you want the yolks out of those. And we are going to give those a good quick mix. Now the egg yolks are at room temperature. The butter, it doesn't matter so much because we're melting it. But the egg yolks are at room temperature which makes it easy for them to break up. And to that, we're going to add a uh, half a cup of milk, which is uh, 120 grams in there. And we're going to add uh, a third of a cup or uh, 43 grams of of cornstarch to this so this is all stuff we can do in advance we'll get the cornstarch out of the bowl why cornstarch sticks to everything i have no idea get that in there good there set this stuff aside just like such grab a little whisk and we're just going to mix this all up okay we got that whisked up now i'm going to add in a quarter of a teaspoon of uh, salt it's just kosher salt um if you buy kosher salt uh like we do um that's pretty much all we use um i don't use an iodized salt uh very rarely for baking or cooking it's almost always kosher because what kosher salt does is it brings out more of the flavor without giving you a heavy salt taste but you want to get that in there so that way you know you do enhance the flavors that you're putting into your uh, cake pie cook whatever it is you're doing all right we got that mixed up now we just gotta wait for this to come to a boil uh, along the edges a little bit and uh, then we'll move on to the next step all right, we got some bubbling going on there so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna temper our eggs our egg mixture over here or well first thing we're going to do is take this off the heat because if not it'll steadily explode as we uh are tempering our eggs so we're going to take our mix bring it over here into the bowl and we're just going to slowly pour it in and whisk at the same time if you don't then you will end up with scrambled eggs and i'm putting about a half a cup's worth of the brown sugar milk mix in with the egg mix so then once we get that done and we know we're good and tempered and we're all about planning about the same temperature we can go ahead and start pouring this in to our main mix right but it's like we've done a thousand times before now what we're going to do is we're going to put this back on the heat just like such and we're going to cook this until it gets it starts to boil again and gets thick all right so that way we're, we're basically making our pudding right now but we gotta give that cornstarch a chance to activate so i'll be back when this is uh thickened up 
Okay, we have thickened up and we are bubbling. So the last thing I wanna do before I take this off the heat, I've got one teaspoon, four grams of vanilla. I'm gonna put in there and I'm gonna whisk that in good. And then turn my heat off. Now you wanna wait till the very end to put your vanilla on, or vanilla in. So that way um, it retains its flavor. Sometimes, especially when cooking uh, custards, puddings, things of that nature, you put your vanilla in too soon, it uh, will take away from the flavor of the vanilla in it. And I think it needs vanilla. So we got that. Now we're just gonna pour this into the crust right away while it's hot. I'm under the impression it's because this is gonna thicken up pretty quick um, as it cools or start to set at any rate. I mean, we are gonna put this pie in the oven, so as soon as we get this done, you turn your oven on 350 degrees, if not sooner. As far as the pie crust goes, you can use a store-bought pie, you can make your own. I have a recipe for my pie crust uh, that you can use. I'll put a link to what video it's in because I don't really remember offhand. I think it's the cherry, cherry uh, crisp video. But either way, okay, so we're gonna set this aside real quick. I'm gonna rearrange a couple of things and then we'll make the meringue because the meringue's gonna go on this before we get it in the oven. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Now I'm using a stand mixer with a whisk attachment. If you have a stand mixer, use your whisk attachment. If not, just use the attachments that come with your uh, hand mixer. The four egg yolks we had, here's the whites that went with them. So we're gonna put those in right off the bat. And to that, I'm going to add uh, half a teaspoon, I believe it is, yes, half a teaspoon, two grams of cream of tartar. What cream of tartar does, because we're making a meringue, much like when you make a whip topping, it uh, stabilizes it so you can't over whip it, right? And now what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to start mixing this, and when we get soft peaks, you know, where it gets foamy, we're gonna start adding a half a cup or 100 grams of sugar, but we wanna do that slowly. So I don't know if you can see down in there or not. Let me see if I can't get you moved in a little bit so that way we can uh, enjoy the show together, so to speak. There we go. You see how we're starting to get foamy? Now we're gonna do is start adding that sugar in, you know, 100 grams, half a cup of sugar, just a little bit slowly. All right, we got our sugar in there. So now all we're gonna do is turn our mixer up to high speed, and we're gonna whip this to uh, stiff, glossy peaks. All right, so we've got our eggs to the point where or meringue to the point where they are stiff, glossy peaks. Let me, if I can get it all apart here, show you what I'm talking about. So there's a couple things to look for. And one of them is when you go through it, you should be able to see some trails. And then, I mean, it should be stiff. You know, I guess is what I'm looking at. If I, if I pull that up, I don't know how well you can see that but it should bring it up to a peak and hold. Yeah, which it is, and that's what we want. So, we got that together now. See, really, this is a quick, easy pie to make. I were wow, going the wrong direction. This is why you need to pay attention. All right, so, we get the mixer out of the way. We'll bring the pie back into the picture now. We're gonna put this meringue on top of the pie. When we, when you put a meringue on a pie, much like a lemon pie, any, any pie that you're putting a meringue on, you wanna make sure that you get it all the way to the edge of the pie. I mean, and you want it to be on the, the crust. Meringues have a tendency to shrink and they have a tendency to, you know, I, they can do some weird things. But the biggest, the biggest thing people have problems with 
is they shrink. I mean, it even still, it happens to me. I don't make them often enough to be a meringue expert. But you want it to be able to cover all the way up and it's basically going to hold on to the uh, the pie crust. So that way it doesn't, as it cools, it doesn't shrink off of it. So you want to make sure you get it on that pie crust good. And like I said before, you can use a uh, just a store-bought pie crust. You know, you don't have to make your own. Uh, I know plenty of people out there that use store-bought that's fine i mean you don't have to although i will say after you know a couple of years now of making my own crust i would much rather have a homemade crust over a store-bought pie crust anytime um and even if you screw it up in the beginning because pie crust is something that's uh not not hard to do but there's not really directions so to speak i mean there's basic directions but nothing that will tell you, you know, exactly this much or exactly that much, especially when it comes to the, the water that you have to put in it. All right, so we got this done. Sorry, I know I like to ramble, but it's all pertinent, I think. So we got that connected to the crust, just like such. So what do we do with it now? Well, now we are gonna take it, we're gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes all we're looking to do sorry is to uh brown the top of the meringue okay we want to uh get a nice light brown color to it and then once it's done we'll pull it out take a look at it and talk about what to do next all right i'll see you here in just a minute all right so we let the uh <clears throat> butterscotch pie uh chill in the fridge for more than a couple hours it should have probably uh, taken it out a little beforehand but whatever um i did leave it sit out more than an hour though and it caused me some situations so now that you can really see it from there but this is what i was talking about with separation it's a good thing it happened you know but it didn't come up across the top all the way and it caused a little moisture buildup in between the crust and the meringue but i don't think it hurt anything i just poured it off and so far we're looking good so we're gonna grab a piece but i wanted to show you that because that's what happens if you don't get it set right on the or what can happen if you don't get it set right on the crust edge and see it and seat it on there Meringues naturally shrink. All right. All right. They're looking good, though. Yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of that syrup in there. I don't know what caused that. But right there we are. There's our piece. Turned out pretty solid. Looks good. I know I will sell the way around no matter how the pie tastes. Uh, it's pretty. There's our inside there, which is nice. Um, there's a little bit of juice in there though. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly what the juice is from. Exactly. Um, I have an idea though. I, my thought was, because I remember reading this somewhere, that I didn't whip the meringue quite long enough. And so that uh, it can cause moisture or it could have been where it pulled away uh and it was still cooling from being in the oven it, the moisture built up there it's hard to say but i'm gonna run with uh i uh didn't whip them long enough we'll see That's good. That really is good. It tastes just like butterscotch and meringue. I mean, you can't go wrong with either of those. Yep. I'd give this a shot. 
to where it takes you. That's really pretty good. Damn. All right. Well, uh, try this. Let me know if you do. Let me know if you have a recipe of your own. You know, um, or if you don't like butterscotch pie. I mean, just let me know. All the same. All right, well, <clears throat> honestly, that needs to be tried either way it goes. So next week, no clue. Um, sometime, if you haven't already, uh, I will have out probably in the next day or two a video on how to can tomato sauce. I think I mentioned it earlier. And my day has run together. But uh, I got it taped. I just got to get it edited. And then that will be out. You'll know how to make how we used. We had a total of like 75 pounds of tomatoes, not including what's still out there in green. And we ended up making uh, three different things out of it. We got 24 pints of tomato sauce. I got 12 salsas, 14 retels. So we got a lot out of it, but not nearly what all we need. So um, you'll get to see me make more retel. I'm going to do a video on that and a video on my salsa. The salsa will probably be first. So until next week, when we figure out what we're doing, I love you. I love you very much. Tell somebody else you love them and you love them very much. It's going to make their day a whole lot better. Make them some of this, take some of this pie, take it to them. It's a great conversation. All right. I'll talk to you later. Love you. Bye.